Hello everyone, thank you for joining us once again right here on the Global Underwater Explorers YouTube channel. My name is Nico Liro, back from Deep Dive Dubai and the GUE Project Ooh. Diver Conference, which was awesome. Uh, guys, please stay tuned to GUE TV for that and indeed to the channel because there's loads of cool stuff coming from people like Sergio Shirato, Alessandro Moroni, uh, the guys from Divesoft, Suex. Like, there's a plethora of awesome presentations coming. So keep it right here on Global Underwater Explorers and on GUE TV. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, guys, please do hit the like, hit the subscribe button, tickle the notification bell so you know whenever we've got a new piece of content coming up. And the content we have coming for you today is with my good old buddy, who I should have met in person in Deep Dive Dubai, but life's a <laughs> So, Michael Indeed. Menduno, welcome back to the channel, man. <laughs> Thanks, Nico. Yeah, I know. We missed. I was in Italy and got sick and wasn't able to travel. So, Dude, uh, next time. This close. <laughs> I know. I know. It's close. Uh, yeah. Do you know what? In hindsight, it's probably a good thing. I don't think that the um, that the hall, the presentation hall, was big enough mm. to contain both our personalities. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a... Yeah, yeah. An event horizon there that uh, no one would literally have been that, that glass keeping the water in crack. <laughs> I say that humbly, of course. <laughs> oh God! So well, I have yeah, a Michael. question for you. Yes, I have a shoot. question for you this morning. So uh, to kick off our our introduction here, so will open circuit tech diving go the way of the dinosaurs? Um, I uh, are you asking me? objectively or are you asking my opinion as someone who dives open circuits <laughs> well well even more Jeez, i hope not <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to upgrade it's well it's 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 not a simple answer to that question but we're going to come back and revisit it at the end of our uh, uh talk of stories we'll, we'll come back to that story and uh yeah go through that so cool stay tuned to the end of the video guys shoot mr manduno <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to kick off uh, this issue with some uh, amazing black water photography by a guy named uh, uh, Songda Kai, uh, also known as Wowie or Yowie Wowie. <laughs> wow, uh, his 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 images are just amazing. He's a Chinese photographer living in the Philippines. In fact, Wowie is his uh, uh, tag along name, and uh, his his work is just phenomenal. So uh, we're going to be featuring that at in this issue and excited about that it's been in the works for a while so and of course blackwater photography is where you go down at night trying to catch the layers of little creatures that come up so you have a light and you go hang in the dark with a big camera and wait for things to come to you so uh, yeah. be kind of interesting we next uh dive into a story called uh, now fill this the machinations of a mad mix maker you know we all go into the dive stores and order up our mixes, whether it's a nitrox mix or some blend of Trimix, uh, for GUE divers, a standard gas. But, you know, what really goes into creating those mixes for you? I mean, how, how much work is it? What, what kind of machine does that? It's more than just a compressor. So um, we spoke with uh, Francesco Camelli, uh, My guy. actually a, a music producer uh, mm -hmm. and a mixer in the music world. But he created this uh, really amazing uh, blending station, mixed gas station. And so the article really kind of goes through all the machinations of how you put one of these things together and what's involved. And it's uh, a very geeky piece and, and really fascinating, I think. So uh, I think people enjoy it. It makes a very nice change to what Francesco normally does for the channel, where he does kind of comedy related um tips and tricks for the youtube channel so i'm going to be very interested to see the many faces of francesco Cometti. if you haven't seen the scuba tips and trips video uh, tips and tricks video guys not trips that's a whole different topic the link to that is above so you can check out some of francesco's videos now yeah so then we have two very cool uh history pieces this month uh a story by eric pet Petkovich called the uh, U-1105, the Black Panther. This was a World War II German submarine and was really at the cutting edge of the arms war between the, the German subs that were sinking, you know, the, the Allies' uh, ships and then the, the ships that were hunting the submarines with sonar because this was just the birth of uh, sonar. So it's a, a really interesting tale of how this ship played a role in this and then eventually was uh, taken and sunk. Uh, it's one of the most accessible uh, submarines on the east coast of the U.S. It's uh, the mm. Potomac River 
off uh, a point in Maryland. So a uh, really interesting story. And then uh, our friend Ed Stockdale, who's with the uh, Finnish Scientific Diving Academy, uh, coordinator for them, wrote a piece connecting two really iconic uh, diving sites, the Longbon Mind in Sweden, uh, which is a, a mineral mind uh, and a, a fabulous dive site that people have, are actively exploring. And then the USS Monitor, the first Civil War ironclad submarine, basically, an uh, early submarine uh, that was sunk early in the war and became a really controversial shipwreck in early tech days. Um, Gary Gentile had applied to the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, who control the ship, to dive it. It's in 75 meters, 80 meters. Uh, and they said, no, that scuba diving can't go that deep. Well, this is back in early tech days. And uh, so Gary went to court and eventually won, and, and the monitor was uh, done. So very interesting like, story, though. I feel like you're saying this almost with a kind of wry, I was right smile on your face. Oh, we can't go that <laughs> well, deep, really. <laughs> well, I would say it was a critical case, yeah, because back then, yeah. again, uh, you know, people just didn't think about what scuba, what we could do with scuba, which we are now doing. Um, so we have a really heartwarming piece, a, a personal piece written by uh, our production artist, uh, fitness instructor and tech diver, uh, Kenzie Potter Stevens. Uh, she's an undergrad student in Germany. And uh, I guess the question is, what can one diver do to change the world? Well, Kenzie Potter did a whole lot. Her and her put together a team. They reached out to divers in the Ukraine and uh, from, from Germany. And uh, basically, after about 10 trips back and forth, uh, taking stuff, they, they've rescued and, and placed 200 Ukrainians in uh, homes in Germany and Poland. So, uh, you know, her team made a huge difference in many, many people's lives. Uh, at the end, she goes, you know, it was a whole lot of work, but even, even if it had only been one person that we'd rescued, it would have been worth it. So it's, it's, a, it's a really great story by one of our own. So uh, Beautiful words. I, well said, Kenzie. Yeah, I hope she yeah. sees this video because I say this sincerely. Well done to you. Really, really well yeah. done. Yeah. So anyway, so now we're back to our question. Will open circuit uh, tech diving for the way the dinosaurs? You know, it's it's interesting because back in the early days, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, it really looked like that we called it the tech diving revolution. It was all really about mixed gas diving, uh, going to using helium mixes for deep diving and nitrox and oxygen for decompression. But when you look at it from here, you'd really say, well, the tech diving revolution was really about the birth of uh, sport rebreathers. That, that right. was really, but it took us a while to get there, right? We had to be able yeah. to deal with mixed gas diving before we could get the rebreathers, et cetera. And there uh, were no really <laughs> units back then early on. Yeah, also, like, also yeah. the yellow box of death, as it's known. <laughs> that was another yes, thing yes. you had to deal with. <laughs> yes, Martin, Martin Parry, AP diving, inspiration. It was the first really production sport rebreather, a uh, uh, closed circuit rebreather. Uh, Drager, of course, had come out with a semi-close. So, so anyway, in this, in this package of stories, we have uh, Dr. Neil Pollock, uh, who's the uh, research chair of hyperbaric and diving medicine at the uh, University Laval in uh, Quebec. He was a former uh, research director for Dan. And he really kind of goes through the case for looks at open circuit compared to closed circuit and makes the argument that really, from an operational and physiological point of view, you're really better off on a, we're really better off on a rebreather. It, it, it fits what we do better. Though it's not for everyone because it's got some requirements, et cetera. But a lot of the, some of the thoughts on open circuit that it's simpler, uh, et cetera, just uh, less complex, aren't necessarily true and, or, and, and less expensive, aren't necessarily true when you really look at the whole package. So um, it's really an interesting deep dive into rebreathers and our physiology, pluses, minuses. And then uh, our uh, in-depth reporter, Ashley Stewart, um, has done a piece looking at uh, talking to some of the crystal ball gaming with some of the uh, leaders of GUE and kind of where they see things going. Obviously, a trend right now in the GUE communities are many, many people are going right from tech one, uh, getting their mixed gas cert, going right to the rebreather uh, because they see that as the future. So um, I think it'll it'll engender some interesting discussions and thought. Mm. Well. 
I like open circuit, but I'm all for, you know, closed circuit is definitely going to become more mainstream. It's something that I'm yeah. very excited to, you know, delve more into. It's grow slowly, but surely it's growing. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So anyway, I think people enjoy these issues. Um, I, I can tell people where to go. If, if you don't, if you're watching this and you don't know where to go, uh, point your browser to indepth.blog or gue.com forward slash blog. And uh, the issue is available now. So uh, click in and uh, away you go there. So if you're not already subscribed to Indepth, make sure you head on over there. You've literally got a tech diving legend um, writing all this amazing stuff for you guys with an amazing team of artists and contributors as well. Um, and as I said, if you are new to the Global Underwater Explorers YouTube channel, do like the video if it's something you've been liking. Share the video with anyone who you think may be interested. And please, guys, do hit that subscribe button. But until next month, uh, I'm Nico Luro. He's Michael Menduno. And we'll see you guys very soon. See you soon.